Hello, welcome to another free online homework help video from alexplacehelp.com. My name is Alex, I'm here to help. In this video, I'm going to show you how to derive the quadratic formula. A lot of students ask, where the heck did this formula come from? How is it derived? Did somebody just make it up? The answer to that is no. And I'm going to show you how to derive it. If you haven't already, please switch to full screen mode or hit the HQ button down here at the bottom or hit the expand video player at the top. It's a lot easier to see what I'm doing on the screen if you do any of those things. Okay, if you remember back to uh, say pre-calc or algebra 2, you'll be given some sort of uh, quadratic formula. f of x equals some number times x squared plus another number times x plus some other constant. These, this a, b, and c are the coefficients of the quadratic formula. They're always real numbers. They can be integers, they can be fractions, decimals. As long as they're real, they'll work. One example could be f of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 8, where a equals 1, b equals negative 2, c equals negative 8. To see what this looks like, I have a graph here. Parabola crosses the axis at two locations typical question that you'll be given with this is where does the function cross the x-axis or where does the function f of x equal zero now you can kind of look at the graph visually and say eh, it kind of it kind of looks like it's between negative three and negative one obviously it's probably about negative two and then over here it's about four but there's an exact method and you don't want to guess where the numbers are you want to be exact math is all about exact answers most of the time. There's exceptions, but most of the time. So anyway, what you have to do is factor the function. And I'm not going to get into that. I'll uh, put a link in the video for a factoring method, but I'm just going to assume you know how to do this. You factor x squared minus 2x minus 8, and you end up with x plus 2 and then x minus 4. You set each of those factors equal to 0, and you get x plus 2 equals 0, x minus 4 equals 0, x equals negative 2 or 4. This method works for many groups of integers, a, b, and c being integers. It works for many groups and you can do it on paper real easily, but what if you have something that looks like this, where you have the coefficients are all funky decimals, 0.75x squared plus 1.92x minus 32.987? Yeah, good luck with that. A formula is needed to solve any quadratic equation given an arbitrary set of coefficients a, b, and c. This is known as the quadratic formula. So, given any arbitrary quadratic equation of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are real, derive a formula that can be used to find the zeros of the function f of x. So the first step is to set the function equal to zero, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. The next step, you divide all the terms by a to get this leading coefficient equal to one. I'm going to go be going through these steps kind of brute force, just kind of follow along with me, pause the video, read over them if I end up going too fast. I need to cram this into 10 minutes. The next step is you subtract c over a from both sides, and then you get this, x squared plus b over ax equals negative c over a. The next step, you have to complete the square. To do that, you take you add b over 2a squared minus b over 2a squared to the left side. This term right here equals 0 because these two terms cancel each other out. So adding 0 to the left side is okay. You haven't changed the overall problem. But you can change the way it looks next thing you do is you factor the first three terms because when you complete the square you form what is known as a perfect square these three terms right here form this check your work when you do math I'm going to show you how to check this from this the previous step step five where you get these three factors here and then you form a perfect square by completing the square if you don't believe that step work backwards it's a great way to check your work. A lot of times working backwards, if you don't get what you start with, then you've done something wrong. So you take that little, that little uh, 
part right here, x plus b over 2a squared, and you FOIL it. Whoops. If I can get my mouse working properly, you FOIL it. So then you get two binomials being multiplied by each other. You do the first, outer, inner, last, where you have first terms equals x squared, outer, b over 2a times x, inner, b over 2a times x, and then b over 2a times b over 2a. You can combine terms. The center terms become 2 times b over 2a times x. And then you can, you can simplify this last term here to b over 2a squared. The 2's cancel in the middle, and you end up with x squared plus b over a times x plus b over 2a squared, which is what you had to start with before you completed the square. There's also a video I have about completing the square. Go ahead and click that link right there if you're if you want to know more about completing the square. So anyway, that was just a little math check. Back to the derivation. I'll call up step five again, just so you can be reminded where we are. We have a perfect square term here and another perfect square term equals minus CA. The next step since we're, ultimately we're trying to get x by itself, so we have to get all of the terms away from the left side and leave x behind. So we add b over 2a squared to both sides. That cancels this term here, and then we have b over 2a squared minus c over a on the right. Expand that term, the b over 2a squared. It becomes b squared over 4a squared because you have to square the 2 can't forget to square the 2. A lot of students forget to do that. You also have to square the a. Everything inside there is being squared, or multiplied by itself rather. The next thing you do is you combine the fractions, the, the two fractions on the right side. In order to combine fractions, you must find a common denominator. That is required. Don't forget to do that. The common denominator is 4a squared. There's an a here, so all you got to do is multiply it by 4a. But what you do to the bottom, you must do to the top. So you have to multiply by 4a over 4a. And then come add them together, and then you end up with b squared minus 4ac. All of that is over 4a squared. Next step, recall from step 8, we have a perfect square on the left, b squared minus 4ac over 4a squared. Find the square root of both sides to get rid of the squared exponent right here. So then all we have left on the left side is x plus b over 2a. When you square root a side, you have to take the plus or minus of it. You can't forget the plus or minus because negative 4 squared is equal to positive 16. When you square a negative, you end up with a positive number. So the stuff on the inside could have been negative when you had squared it, so you can't forget the plus minus. Next, you simplify the radical. The denominator has a square root of 4a squared. This 4a squared is under the radical, so if you take the square root of it, square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of a squared is just a. So you have plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac on top. All of that is over 2a. The next step, subtract b over 2a from both sides. So you minus b over 2a, and minus b over 2a, and drum roll please, you end up with the very famous quadratic formula. The program I'm using doesn't have a simple way to put a plus minus in. I did it up here, I tricked it, but right here it doesn't display it. So you have the plus and the minus, right here and right here. Minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac, all of that over 2a. The stuff on the inside, b squared minus 4ac, that has some interesting properties uh, when it comes to uh, parabolas and the roots of the parabola, or the zeros. For more information about what that is, that's called the discriminant. Click this link for a video. I, I'll describe it in that video. And that's it. The quadratic formula. If you have any complicated math or physics problems that you're working on, please send them to me. I have a form at www.alexpleasehelp.com slash online slash submit. I have a form that you can fill out, and if you do that, I'll make a video 
and post it on YouTube, and all that's for free. I never intend to charge for these things. And you can view all of the previously submitted problems, including this one, at alexpeacehelp.com slash online slash problems. Thank you for watching.